Greetings from the Rectory, episode number 11. I'd like to begin this episode with a little bit of sad news. We've had a few deaths in the parish, and I'd just like to have everyone pray for these. We've had Dr. Gleason passed away. He was about 95. Uh, Marie Mudd of Happy Memory was 100 and a quarter. Um, they both passed away in the last couple weeks, so 195 combined years is, is pretty good. So please pray for those souls. And, and a bit of sad news, Michael Cunningham, who graduated from St. Rita School just five years ago, passed away in a car accident yesterday. So I'd ask you to please pray for the repose of his soul and for his family, certainly, as they undergo the tragedy of losing their son. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May their souls and all the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. Now for some better news. Let's go to some better news straight away. We had our first weekend of Masses, and it went swimmingly, I thought. We had very few problems. The Holy Spirit worked out. No Mass was too full, and every Mass was needed. So that was good to see that we calculated that properly. So we split up the Latin Mass, we split up the 11 o'clock Mass, and we split up the Spanish Mass because those were our three most crowded Masses. And so we had a second Mass for each one of those hours, and it went very well. It was pretty full for the first one, and then a little half full, three quarters full for that second one. So they were definitely needed, and it was good, better than good. It was great to have everybody back in church. Uh, we weren't full-blown singing and incensing and everything quite yet, but it was just a wonder to have everybody back in church. Thank you. We have the same schedule for this weekend. I don't see an end to this schedule for a little while. Until we're able to open up the entire church and use all the pews, we'll probably be running this same basic schedule. So we'll get used to it. Uh, it makes for a long Sunday morning. I would like to remind people because of this schedule, we won't be having confessions on Sunday. So we have confessions all the other days are regular. Saturday is regular, but it's just too hectic to try to get in the masses and have the people lined up on the aisle and have the confessions while the masses are going on under these current restrictions. So we will not be having confessions on Sunday for the time being until we switch back to our regular schedule. And then lastly, there was perhaps a little bit of confusion or misunderstanding on the policy we have for masks here at St. Rita's and what the bishop had said and what the governor had said and how can we say what we're saying when the bishop says this and the governor says that. So I just want to clarify our position on the matter. And first of all, I want to say our position on the matter conforms completely to the regulations set up by the bishop and by the governor. So first of all, the diocesan instruction is that people will be expected to wear masks. And when the bishop was asked the question, does expected mean must, he said no. We don't have a right to do that. We can say we expect you to, just like I said. We expect people to come in in masks and be charitable when they're passing closely by people to wear their mask as a charity for others. However, when they are in the pew and they're in the celebration of the mass, they're actually not required to have the mask on. And I have, for all you lawyer folk out there, the executive order from the governor because it's important that we read these things. And so uh, under section A, number six, it says face coverings may be removed to participate in a religious ritual. So I would hope you're participating in mass. So you, according to the governor, you can remove them. And then there's this also any person who has trouble breathing, persons with health conditions that prohibit wearing a face mask, and then he says, any person who declines to wear a face covering because of a medical condition shall not be required to produce or carry medical documentation verifying the stated condition, nor shall the person be required to identify the precise underlying medical condition. That, my friends, is what we call a big old loophole. And when we have big old loopholes, people take them. And so that's why I decided to say, why don't we see if we can be reasonable considering all the parameters that the both the bishop and the governor have set out to make people most comfortable what can we do and that's why I decided that being able to remove your mask while you're sitting in your pew and you're properly socially distanced from other people we're not singing so that people are not spitting out germs to other people we're keeping a more subdued and let's remember nobody should be talking in church anyway so that's why we're doing it. So people have an absolute right, according to the governor himself, to not always wear a mask. And the last thing we want to do is get into the, uh, the business of policing this. And even the governor said it's not to be policed. 
And so that's what the bishop says, that's what the governor says, and that's what we're going to do. And by and large, we had little to no problem this weekend. People were very charitable. Some people chose to wear them during Mass. Some people chose not to wear them during Mass. And that's that, according to the governor, is their prerogative to do. And who are we to remove that choice from them? So I hope that clears things up for anyone that had any concerns. I do want to reiterate, nobody is obliged to come to Mass. If you feel uncomfortable, obviously if you feel sick, you ought not to be coming. But nobody is obliged to come. I once again will also renew my proposal and offering to anyone that is uncomfortable coming to Mass, if you still would like to receive communion, just email me and we'll set up a time and I will be more than happy to have a small communion service with you. I do have people that are doing that are a little bit older that are doing that on a regular basis and it's just fine. They're not ready to go back to Mass, but they still want to receive our Lord. That's all we want is to be able to offer our Lord to them. So if you're a little bit uncomfortable, you don't need to come to Mass, but you're certainly welcome to come to communion service of your own choosing in your own time. Just let me know, or Father Borkno, or Father Carroll know. We're more than happy to take care of that for you. So I hope this clears things up. We've got another exciting weekend coming home, and I hope it all works out just as well as this weekend did. May Almighty God bless you and keep you. The Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.